Are we rolling? Because I got a, I got something to say. Hey, let's let's go. Go. <laughs> you already know. You already know. And this is you already know. Put this down. <laughs> Dude, stay putting the art down. <laughs> Sorry, gotta get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, start it from here, <laughs> bro. It's your it's a, it's a place where you're at. A place where you means that be adorned with stuff. I got the creepy Chucky fucking cave, cave here. I, man, that, man, nobody's paying attention to that. <laughs> I feel like any moment someone can just creep out and get me like, ah. yeah. You're you're more aware of that than anybody else. I'm ready, <laughs> I'm ready with the little cabinets. Room. I see. You know what I'm saying? Welcome. You already know he's Kenny Thompson. Craig and Rolly. You know, we appreciate you. Appreciate you taking getting this time from your big dog. How are you? You know what it is, man. I'm, I'm good. Chilling. All right, it's all right. It's a beautiful day, man. It's a beautiful day in New York today. I heard, I heard, I heard. Yeah. You and Anthony Anderson single-handedly keeping the velour suit business in business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's big man comfortable. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? They sent y'all the whole catalog. Yes, it's every flavor player. <laughs> hey, man. I'm trying to be comfortable and accepted. You know what so I'm I saying? can go anywhere I want and be comfortable. That's you, what's up. You feel me? You smell me? One thousand percent. Um, all right, Keenan. In full transparency, I wasn't gonna start this episode this way. I really wasn't. <laughs> I had I I really had no plans. I was like, let me take this week off from this one. But I, you know what? Listen, it's this is the year you already know records, bro. We didn't bro. chase it. We but we must face it and embrace it. You know what I'm gotta saying? Gotta face it and embrace it. Well, you gotta That's face got. it and embrace it. So we got someone. We we might have a candidate. It looked like someone's auntie. <laughs> I don't know what's going on out here. The world's crazy. Let's see what's going on with someone's auntie right here. Cut back to the driver's seat. <laughs> <laughs> Back and forth to the driver's seat. <laughs> <In a> Chrysler. Got that Mustang out there, got that Volkswagen out there. Hey, man. Well, someone get One outfit, man. two locations. Outside the car, inside the car. <laughs> Bro, that's also, someone's auntie and mama. Just late 90s. Like, you stuck in the late 90s era, apparently. That was, that was a while ago. Amy. Man, that was a swing at it. Yeah, you know, she's not the, you know, you're going to lose your job lady, but you know what I mean? She might come back around and for an audition. You know what I'm saying? I'll wait till we remind everybody about that. As soon as we remind everybody about that, it's going to be like, yo, I remember that. Blah, 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 blah. Bam, 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 Coachella. Two year anniversary coming soon, guys. Just know That's that. That's crazy. Another month, another month or so. We That's got crazy. Some, we got some shit planned. Let's go. Tell All me. right. Let's get into it. SNL recap. You got my queen on the show. Double, double duty. Yo, your lady, my your, lady, your, your wifey over there, man. My lifey, she, did she come in mama. and like fucking kill the show or what? Murdered it, murdered it, murdered, murdered it. it. No, nah, murdered it. She murdered she it. Killed it. She murdered it. She I didn't did, know she was that man. talented. I knew exactly. she exactly not that talented. Yeah, she did her thing, man. She did her thing top to bottom with the musical guests on top of it and the music. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so, let's get into it. So cold uh, open, cold open, Easter Bunny, cold open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bowen is he's a buddy. <laughs> yeah, and all good. those people. They I just, got cut out of it, man. I was Herschel Walker and I got cut out of it. So I, I got, <laughs> well, because the number eight one, thing? no, 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 it was cut for time, but number one, Herschel got to get more famous so everybody knows. So it's <laughs> a little more crucial to the game. And number two, you know, I, I just, you know, I got to get a better impression, I guess, better wig, you know, just get the look down, more down packed. You gotta see the dress rehearsal. The dress rehearsal is anywhere to be seen. It, it's, I just stand by line. It's pretty hilarious. Like 
I was just, you know, the look is was hilarious, you know, because it's 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 semi there, you know. What I mean, it's it's really close, so that's what makes me laugh, you know. what I'm saying because it's just like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 that wig is just like you know, in that suit, and like you know, a couple look right, right close to it, and then my impression is almost not even there, you know. what I'm saying like he's got an interesting ass voice, and, you know, like Herschel Walker talk like you. Know, Hey, you know what? I'm Herschel. You're a Herschel Walker. You know, he like literally <laughs> talks like that when you think he would talk like, you know, a big football playing kind of dude. He's like, Herschel, Herschel, everybody, everybody, give it up for Herschel Walker. He's like, really? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> no one remembers what Herschel Walker looks like. That's why I got cut. No one's like, 1, Herschel Walker. Who, <laughs> what the fuck's Herschel He's Walker? He's running in Georgia, but he played for the Cowboys. He played college at Georgia, but that was in the 80s. Like, yep. so far ago, it's crazy. The memory I'll never forget is when everyone says Herschel Walker, I remember him in some magazine article. I think it was Sports Illustrated. And he was doing, they showed him like in a karate gi. He did karate. Okay. Uh-huh. And then another photo was him doing push ups with his wife sitting on his back. And mm-hmm. it was like this big black dude with this blonde lady on his back. And mm-hmm. I was like, is this racist? <laughs> I was a kid. It's a re- I was a kid. Reflection of how racist. society is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know this is this woman, but is this racist? Right. She, and he's strong, though. He's strong, though. <laughs> right, right. He's strong. Be strong, black man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Shout outs to Kyle. Kyle is Jesus. He's like, yeah, well, uh, yeah I'm Jesus. Oh, no, I'm just it. kidding. <laughs> I'm Jared Leto. Also, this is my exact outfit I wore to the Kids Choice Awards. <laughs> oh, that killed me. That was great. Uh, Kate is Fauci was great. Yep. Um, Chris Cecily killing it is Eric Adams. Oh, he murdered that. Oh, he killed oh. it. Oh, the crime is up. Nah, I'm, I'm, York, I'm, I'm the mayor, bitch. This right. is New York City, bitch. I'm, right. So shit, whatever his quote, his line is, is that. No, no, no. I'm just playing unless you <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is my yeah. city, bitch. <laughs> he yeah. said something like that. I run the city, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he be killing. Um, oh, says man. Liz, who was she? She was, she was a, a the politician with the, with, the, with, the, with the chocolate gun. Yeah, the gun told lady. Yeah. Yeah. Gun was chocolate, but the bullets are real. And then Mikey is Elon Musk. Yes, yes, he yeah. kept on making all the bad jokes. Yeah, it was Mikey a solid opener. Pressing in, yeah, it was no, it was opener. a solid opener. Solid. Oh, opener. and then James coming with that Trump. You know what I mean? It's like, At all right, end. you want to put up a bunch of people doing impressions? Now put up a dude that does impressions for real, for real, for real, for real. And it's just like it's it's helping his Trump along the way for sure. It's helping people like accept. This is the new thing, you know what I'm saying? And like learn to like understand what it sounds like and know where, you know, the sense of humor of it is. You know what I'm saying? Cause now it's like just listing nonsensical things or just like nonsensical kind of jargon, basically. And it's really funny, man. Just just embrace it. He back clean up on that like a motherfucker. Like a motherfucker. It was like, great. Yep, yep, yep. Moving on. Lizzo introduction. Yep. Come on, Lizzo monologue. Yes, with the monologue. Yeah, man. She came through talking about mama's in the house. That was great. Yep. Pan to her. Yep. 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 This is the only thing I'm going to say. Outfit looking like a fabulous BBW cookie monster. All right. Keep uh, on moving. I didn't understand. No. <laughs> <laughs> that she looked like a fabulous BBW cookie monster. <laughs> right. <laughs> the cookie monster was fabulous because yeah. she had this blue outfit with the blue shimmies and it ah, looked gotcha. white. yeah <laughs> but she looked beautiful but mm-hmm. it was like <laughs> i was just like cookie monster no, right. forget it Back. <laughs> all right let's keep it moving all right let's Sound keep it good. moving all right uh next sketch guess that uh <laughs> clint literis <laughs> hilarious yeah guess that was funny that was a good game show. she murdered that one that's where I was just like, one. all right, this is this. She's yeah. that was one of those like, OK, where is this going when people are like, watching it? You know what I'm saying? And then the back and forth just starts and then it just escalates. And then by the time Ego and Chris chime in, it's just super extra. So it was, that, was, that was a lot of fun because. You know, the game is pretty obvious that it's going back and forth, you know what I mean? And you think that it's not going to heighten, but it it it's still heightened. You know what I'm saying? So, it, yeah, that was a great one. I, I, I really enjoyed that one. She did a great job, like really did a great job. She killed it. 
she really murdered it. I had, I, it, well, I didn't have expectations going in. So I mean, every time she did something, it was just up and up and upping the bar. Great, yeah. great opener for her in terms of the yeah. first sketch. Uh, yeah. Moving on, TikTok. That was hilarious. Keenan with the moves. Ah, uh, you see the moves over there. Busting them out. Shout out to my man. What's his name? You used to hit me on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Because he was real proud that we did an impression of him. But yeah. That, oh, the Detroit great. dust guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but this was a whole other guy. This is the pop locking guy. I mean, I don't know whoever's hitting me on Instagram. I, the, whoever hit you on Instagram is the dust guy. The, you, the original TikTok sketch was with the, the Detroit self defense dude. He probably hit oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, not that dude. The dancing dude. Oh, the there's one. a dancing dude? That, that you really took that from another dude? Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that. I thought you guys were just making shit up. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. That's, that was a real dude that's like dancing in the kitchen. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Do what a oh. bunch of. Like, you know, old, like, T-Pain moves, basically. Yo, you know, stop you know. it. I hate the internet. <laughs> he's, got a follow- he's got a following. People love him. So, you know, it was a little shout out, a little homage. And he was very happy, you know, made his, I'm sure it made his day. You know what I'm saying? Like, seeing himself on the show type shit. So, yeah, that whole shit was dope. Amazing. I, I, the commitment, ladies and gentlemen, the commitment on Andrew Dismukes, if you haven't been paying attention this season, is going up. You know what I mean? Like that dude is finding a whole lot of opportunities to take big, big, big swings with full commitment. And he did it again in fucking full like tiger, like makeup, costume, fangs and everything just to do some like mundane. What was it like? It It was was like a a recap or something. Yeah, Yeah, it it literally was one line. But that shit's so fucking memorable because you're not going to get that visual out of your head. So. Shout out to Dismukes, man. He's coming into his shit. Yeah, and also share out, shout out to Cher, Sarah Sherman. Her doing the podcast thing with Lizzo. And then she's like, they, oh, yeah. had, she was like, had the mic in her mouth. She's going crazy. <laughs> she went crazy this whole episode. So shout out to yeah, Sarah Sherman. Yeah, Sarah's absolutely blasphemy for sure. Great sketch. I'm going to be honest. This whole show, top to bottom, was solid. Whole was show, solid. top to bottom, was fucking solid. It's fucking yep. good. Yep. Seriously. Seriously. It was yep. fucking good. Um, moving on. This shit had me. Listen. I was laughing out loud this whole next sketch. Like, I thought TikTok was hilarious. Like, first one was hilarious. Guess that. Then TikTok was funny as fuck. Mm-hmm. This next one, the Black Eyed Peas shit, it was over, bro. Oh, you like the Black Eyed Peas shit. Oh, no. I, my <laughs> note in here is I'm dead. That's it. Hilarious. Hilarious. That was a good one. I died. These writers, man, the writers are nice and young, and they're like, comedically sharp you know what i'm saying so they know you know what to poke holes in the the moment of the black eyed peas and like just really just poked holes in that whole like movement in time basically that shit was funny as hell shout out to bo and chris and cecily bo and murdering it as fucking taboo out. <laughs> that shit had me dying and then i'm freaking out <laughs> like taboo take it easy man. yeah taboo take it easy <laughs> apple the app I'm apple the app. Apple app how do you spell that uh a p apple the app <laughs> Boom, boom, cow. I, I got that Cecily, boom, boom, cow. That's Cecily and like people in the place. That, people man, in the got place. Applause. Who's she got there? Applause for people. That shit. The people. Where are they at? In the place. In the place. <laughs> <laughs> I was Who are you talking people. to? The people in the place. <laughs> yeah, it was great, man. That was oh, kind of, no. The looks no. all got nailed, I think. Yup. No, yeah. that was great. That was just great, man. That was, that was yeah. just classic, great shit, man. Yeah. Uh, moving on. First At the end of that one, it was yeah. supposed to be, we were ending on like that joke where we was like, all right, let's 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 figure out the title of this next song. And it's like, let's get something. Like, let's make sure it's something that we could say for forever. And it's the R word. Yeah. So it was like, they played it while we were dancing or whatever. But then, you know, I guess like censorship or the uh, the people. Yeah. Yeah, they cut the music. Yeah, they cut the music and cut the R word out. So, and it wasn't, made it a different ending. And I'll give you a snippet. It, 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 they said let's. They definitely twisted the the writing probably in the last the uh, eleventh hour because mm-hmm. I was waiting for them to go let's get and stop, but they said let's get it. So mm-hmm. you know you know what I mean because I remember when the let's get oh, retarded gotcha. came out. So when right, they were like right. we need to find something else, let's get it, and then they were like just left it at that versus let's mm-hmm. get. Right. Bro, like you know what I mean? If they right. if they went raw and then it went boom, that's what I was right. expecting to happen. But whatever, right. you know what I'm saying? So you know what I mean? See, right. baby. You know what I mean? Right. Let me see, baby. Cut it right there. Let's yeah. get ripped. 
Yep. yep. Yeah. Right, right, right. I expected it right there. Like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. <laughs> nah, it didn't happen. Let's keep it moving. Uh, yeah. Fair first date with six black six flags, fam. This caught me off by surprise. Sarah, man. Sarah murdered. Bruh. Sarah, man, she is she's a sniper, bro. Like, she is one to do the craziest, wildest shit that nobody else would do. Her sense of humor is just like, you know, that's what makes her laugh, you know, just crazy in your face or, you know, some kind of crazy-ish kind of idea or whatever. But, man, that Six Flags guy had me fucking dying because it's just a dumbass idea that they have to validate to make a sketch out of it. You know what I mean? To make it believable, you know, make it a story, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. Like, And Lizzo played that shit perfectly. Murdered it. Murdered. I would I would have gone the whole episode of just the whole sketch of just Sarah being the grandpa. I didn't need anyone else. Um, and uh, she stepped it up like she did more and more and more physicality, like, and you know, just was, you know, finding that character as, you know, you know, rehearsal and dress rehearsal. And then the live show, she just just kept, you know, tightening it up, like really like getting comfortable with it or like making sure every single beat was, you know, if she's walking out, she's making sure she's getting a laugh while she's walking out type shit. Yep. It was great. Yep. It was great. Yep. My favorite joke is when Ego comes in and they're like, and he's like, wait, so both of your grandparents are Six Flags guys? And he's like, no, my granddad is a Six Flag is the Six Flags guy. <laughs> my grandma is just a Six Flags guy. That shit is so stupid. It makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. small distinctions to allow for a whole bunch of other six flags guys to come in to basically. pop in a hundred percent uh so moving funny. on pdd and lizzo pdd and lizzo was Did that you... chris and bowen and yeah no it was, was pd please please don't disturb guys oh please Boys. don't destroy yes yeah. please don't destroy and the Liz and lizzo helping lizzo find a new song Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that. By the time that song kicked in, that shit was like, oh, shit, she does music for real. Don't sleep on her type shit. Yeah, I love the yeah, way they do dope. their editing style. Whoever's doing the editing, I love how they yeah. do the edit. It's very like... Yeah, it's like if Benny Hill, if Benny Hill's editor came to TikTok or some shit like that. You yeah, know, or like a TikTok. Like, yeah, like, yeah, 100%. And he had to catch up to like modern day shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just learn how to like cut Good pull. right... It's like thought process cutting. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like as soon as you think of a different thought, it's like that's when you cut, you know, yep. I mean, into a thing. Like once that thought is complete, it's like cut to something else, basically. Yep. Yeah. Good pull. Definitely that's good pull. Cool. The funny sidebar, the the tall, please don't destroy uh guy with the glasses. What's his name? The tall one with uh, glasses. There's the redhead and there's a short one and there's a tall one. Right. right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Keenan, the tall young man. Yes. <laughs> she I was mean, like, she was calling a big daddy. COVID got everybody separated. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they in their own world. You know what I'm saying? And like, I know one of them is Hurley. He's kid. And I know another one is, you know, another one's kid. <laughs> Kid is such a know, senior member. You're such a senior senior, senior kids, member. <laughs> like they're all somebody's kids, basically. Now, so you're just, like you're like those white boys are good. <laughs> are we good? <laughs> yeah. You mean that new that new group of whiteies? Okay, yeah, good. Great. Yeah, yeah. Well, the him. tall white guy. I think his he, name is Matt or Mark. One let's not two. butcher that. Let's just call him the tall one. <laughs> let's find out. All right. Let's, let's all right. Out. Let's go. I got. It. I got. It. I got it. I got it. Uh, Please. I'm about to find out right now. Don't destroy. Got it. All right. All right. Man. So these gentlemen, here you go. It's Ben Marshall. Martin. Sorry, his name is Martin Hurley. Yeah. All right. There we go. There you go. There we it's go. Hurley, he's kid. That's like I said. Not yeah. to name drop his whole like family history and shit. Yeah. So Martin yeah, Hurley. Martin. Yes, young Martin Hurley. He, he, he reminds me of that Kanye lyric. She got a light skinned friend look like Michael Jackson. Like Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder if that's the cleft in his chin. Yeah, he's, he's like pale, yeah. and he's like you know, yeah. <laughs> he's great though. I loved it. I just he just popped in my brain like bing. <laughs> yeah. He's going to love that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. First Lizzo performance. All right. She was out there doing the damn thing. 
new Come song. On, brought the brought the big girls out. You know what yep. I'm saying? Brought the big girls into the into the building doing dance yep. steps. It wasn't like you know, big girls just standing around posing oh. and shit like that. They, they was full dance numbers, full dance steps. So full moving. She twerked. She played the flute. She gave you the full Lizzo experience. The whole thing. That's what everybody wants. Yep. Singing, rapping, twerking, fluting, you know, his fabulous mm-hmm. outfits, big you women know, moving dexteriously. You know there you go. Is. You know what you're coming to get. get. And she gave it to you. And she yeah. gave it to you. Shout out to yeah. you, baby mama. Shout out to you. Yeah. Uh, Andy, I always pick good plans. Keep them moving. Man. You know what Come I'm on, saying? Man. Exactly. Weekend update. <laughs> yeah. Another solid one. No solid one this week. I'm trying to think who's the feature. Sarah. Oh, uh, no. Uh, the Melissa Villa Senor. As the oh, as the driver, killed it. Yeah, murdered she it. Killed it. Murdered it. That was another one that tightened up all the way to the live show. You know what I'm saying? Just like making sure that every moment she was kind of reacting to, as opposed to like if it's not her line, just you know, not necessarily doing much. You know what I mean? She was in it for every little piece of it and every moment, and like you know, changing the emotion to help drive the turns and shit like that. Like she was just like ahead of it to kind of, you know, push it forward. Like it was, it was perfect as performer wise. That's exactly what she was supposed to be doing. Like taking the reins and then letting everybody kind of follow her lead basically. Cause they see her expression change. Then they know it's time to cut to the other camera because that other bit is coming. You know what I'm saying? Type the shit. lights change. Yeah. All of it. You know what I mean? It's like a real cue basically. So yeah, she, she, she nailed that one. Shout out to Melissa, man. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Shout outs to Michael and Colin. I like their their dynamic keeps growing. Like you know, when 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 Shay makes the joke about you know, so finally white people can can use can say the n word. Then it cuts to Colin. He's like, (laughs) you know, you know, he's just keep it real. You know, just that little was just everything. Yeah, it was everything. It was everything. It was everything, you know. I so, think the in between the jokes is is everybody's favorite part. Honestly. Yeah. Their their banter back and forth and them like making each other laugh like for real for real is, is just the best. Spot on. Spot on. Yeah. Spot on. We get joy from their joy. Yeah, um exactly. we're, we're we are weekend update cucks. Mhm. Interesting. <laughs> interesting when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, you're getting joy from their fun. Mm, <laughs> we get joy from their joy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> their joy brings me joy. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Speaking of cucks, Egyptian orgy planning meeting. <laughs> uh, yeah. Time <laughs> to plan like the like orgy. By the way, that snake was heavy as hell. Really? It was like a rubber <laughs> replica, and it was fucking solid and thick and long so that shit was heavy as fuck that's for sure and awkward yeah that you know (laughs) (laughs) but yeah it was like just too awkward and fucking squishy and like there's no support place to hold it so like all the weight at any given moment could be in one small like the spot you're trying to pick it up at is like where it's heaviest (laughs) (laughs) shit man you know what i'm saying like i I got to put that shit on my neck (laughs) And act like it wasn't heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was heavy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to lift the head up, like God damn it! God Who damn. put the weight in the head? <laughs> like, yo, there's weight everywhere on this snake. Man. That shit looked mad realistic. So yeah, it did they, they created a resistant snake for you? Wherever you put right. pressure, they it on the You know, it was just mad <laughs> awkward. So like, it was like lifting dead weight, basically. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, uh, Kyle killed it. Everyone killed it in that one, to be oh, honest. Kyle killed it. Kyle killed it. Lizzo killed it. Yep. With the spanking. Uh, Aiden yep. made me laugh. Cecily and Bowen it. making each other laugh was great. Yep. Yeah, it it was solid was all the way across the board. Yeah. Uh, second Lizzo performance introduced by her mom. That was lovely. Come on. And Lizzo made history in the first performance of being the first. I don't know if it was the first black female musical guest or just the first female musical guest in general to introduce herself. Interesting. And yeah. to play a flute and twerk. Ladies and gentlemen. All of the above. So Top shout history. out to her. She made some kind of history. Yep. 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 I pick queens, bro. I pick queens. Yeah, man. <sighs> Moving on. Speaking of picking queens and twerking, twerking flautist sketch. Oh, man. The, the orchestra. Yes. So twerking orchestra. I just enjoyed my wig in that. That was hilarious. 
That was <laughs> hilarious. They gave you a fucked up, almost like Kel looking wig from uh, Good Burger, like the really yeah, thin exactly. braids. The, the thin noodles. It looked more <laughs> like uh, Nile Rogers. You know, Nile Rogers here, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys, those dread braid things. Yeah. That's what they look the like. Fry guys. Remember the fry guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Lizzo twerking and playing the flute, you know what I mean? Like she's like fucking for real with that shit. And shout out to Alex because he had to keep a straight face getting twerked on his chest. That shit was big. They threatened him with a good time. You know what I'm saying? That shit was that's funny. the eighty for twerking with a violin. Shout out to everybody for getting up and twerking at the end. Yes, you know? yes. Time. Shake what your mama gave you. Last Seriously. sketch: Beanie Baby Investor talking about this mukes. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Like. I think he is definitely going to be one of the go-to dudes like coming up real soon. You know what I'm saying? Like I would watch for him next season because he's going to be probably getting a whole lot of shine, whether it's in the final hour or somewhere throughout the show or whatever it is, or in the beginning, like he's going to be a pivotal character. I think he's definitely a brilliant writer and, you know, a solid performer and he's starting to learn how to, match what makes him laugh to where the audience is at with what they know about him and it's like he's starting to like pull that much closer together basically and he's so much more runway to take yeah. off yeah so much more runway to take off yeah. um that caps that wraps that up but on a sidebar paroli did google it and lizzo did do a ted talk about twerking this is a fact she is a fact. This is a she fact. did. She definitely did because she was talking about its origins and it being related to like African dance and stuff like that. So great. Yep. 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 Great. 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 Moving on. Uh, can we address the rumors, Keenan? Yes, it's ugly out here in the streets. Sam J. There's rumor that Samuel Jackson was banned from SNL, but by you apparently, you're the you're the reason <laughs> why he got banned. Is this correct? <laughs> Are these rumors true? Is the internet running a foul? What's going Listen, on? Man. Anybody of Sam Jackson's caliber has a fucking carte blanche, wide open door to come through SNL at any given moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, come through, hang out. You know, like they've always tried to keep that old Hollywood era kind of alive. You know what I mean? Where anybody could pop in like the Tonight Show or whatever. Like everybody's kind of around type of a thing. He blames me for him cursing on fucking national TV. Now, if you've been in the game as long as you've been in the game, you should know better. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. You want to scapegoat me? Scapegoat I'm sure you're doing it in jest. It's all good. Like, I'll take the blame and every Sam Jackson can stay the same because we all love him. And, I, you know, I don't want nothing but good for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I enjoyed our snakes on the plane time. You know what I mean? And, like, <laughs> Sam is the goat, man. Like, ain't a whole lot of people that have done more for, you know, the movie, like, ticket sales business than Sam Jackson for sure. Like that dude puts asses in seats. Con Film Festival created the best supporting category actor, uh, cat, best supporting actor category because of Sam Jackson's portrayal in Jungle Fever as Gator the Crackhead. I mean, Sam Jackson might be the best, the best, the, the best supporting, the greatest best supporting actor of all time. Definitely, definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. In terms of like, I will steal the show, even though I'm not the headliner, you will be leaving thinking about me. Yes. One thousand percent. Yes, yes, yes. A hundred percent. I, I yeah. feel slowly but surely Mahersha Ali is becoming that. Like every time he's in a role, whenever he leaves the role, I'm like, yo, what the fuck where Mahersha Ali go? Like he, he yeah, always yeah. steals it. He's he's definitely one of them, but he ain't. No, same as a ghost. Firing him off like Sam, like no, Sam's, Sam's like putting out like three movies a month. Damn near. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, Sam's the go. He's getting the checks. Sam, yeah. Sam's gonna make sure he lives good. <laughs> he gets the checks, but he he does good work. So if like the project is shitty, it's not usually his fault because he's committed. He does his thing. You know what I'm yes. saying? But it's just random. Like sometimes it's the wig, like the negotiator. Sometimes it's you know some other random shit, or it's just a weird movie with Nicolas Cage or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or the one where he played the ecstasy chemist who was Scottish who wore a kilt and had straight back braids. Remember that one? That was a real no. Oh yeah, that was a loose one. It was actually a decent movie too. <laughs> yeah, interesting. He was committed. Yeah, he was taking he was committed. swings and Jackie Brown. He was taking wig swings and Jackie Brown. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But he played <laughs> that, that guy was that was a cool. That was a cold ass motherfucker. He played cold. One of his coldest. Odell. Right. 
<laughs> Speaking of cold, uh, we won't get too deep into it, but apparently Mike Tyson beat the brakes out of someone on an airplane. Hey, man, can't keep pride in the bull like that. And motherfuckers, listen, this is a red alert for anybody that's famous and like famously kind of known for getting into shit. You know what I'm saying? There are people out there that are looking for paydays like this is the 80s or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Where they want to just catch you up in some shit and then just cash out. So that's all they wanted was that five second clip of him losing it. Then they could sell it to TMZ and then get a lawsuit and blah, 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 blah. So anybody with a name, it's not worth it. You know, you also, hey, man, if you got to travel with somebody that's supposed to intervene on your behalf so you don't have to be the one, invest in that. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like, there's no, you know, being a punk in in surviving and and not necessarily giving your money away to dumb shit. That's not being a punk at all. That's being smart and knowing your liabilities. You know what I'm saying? Your liability. That's why I understand why a lot of famous people don't drive themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because at any given moment, somebody wants to crash into them and create a lawsuit or whatever and blah, blah, blah. So you kind of limit your exposure to liability, you know, if you're smart. I like to drive me personally. So I'm fine with not being the most famous person in the room if I can just maintain being able to drive. And if I'm not trying to... <laughs> Hunt me down and shit just to get me into some fucking squabble. You know what I'm saying? That they can try to just like squeeze some pennies out of, man. It's it's, it's just nonsense. And oh. Mike, if he really wanted to, he could have really put a hurting on that dude. You know what I'm saying? But basically, he was just trying to teach him like, hey, don't don't get too close to the tiger cage, bro. There's no reason. There's no reason to try to take a selfie up against the tiger cage. You're 100 correct. Um. I saw something, I came across something that sums this up quite well. <laughs> He's so big. He's so hot. Yeah. He doesn't want to move. <laughs> now, the little lion comes, they start messing with him. Uh -huh. Biting his tail, biting his ears. He doesn't do anything. Yeah. They nip his toes and eat the food that's in his domain. They do this and they get Closer and closer and bolder and bolder till one day that lion gets up and tears the shit out of everybody, runs like the wind, eats everything in his path. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals who he is. I mean, you heard? See Walken, one of the greatest. It's one, one of, of the, the goats greatest. telling you right there. Telling you the truth, the God's honest truth. Come With on, a nature man. metaphor, man. The shit is real, man. Shit was super real. All right, let's yeah. move on. Uh, we got a couple topics here, and we'll keep it moving. Um, so, Keenan, I've noticed. Well, I'm not noticed, but I realizations. All right, so podcast after this podcast is fun, jokes, deep, you know, far laugh shit, nerd stuff, but sometimes it's deep stuff. And what I've noticed is one of the facets one of the many facets, but one of the most interesting facets or dynamics of being a man in a relationship is being vulnerable with someone while simultaneously rem remaining strong for them at the same time. Yeah, man. You know, it's that double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's uh, the two-sided mirror. Uh, what is, what's another, like, analogy for it? It's uh, like double edged war was 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 one hundred percent a paradox. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a conundrum. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're one hundred percent one thing, which they both kind of like demand, if you're going to do them well or whatever, then you can't be the other thing. You know what I'm yep. saying? So trying to like play the middle, you know, is is it's always an interesting fucking tightrope dance. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't know give or take you should probably like build your building on rockers you know what i'm saying so you can lean one way or the other depending on the situation and not necessarily be trying to hold firm on 50 50 type shit or just go super one way and not be able to balance out what you need from you know the other direction so what were the two things one is being being vulnerable with someone while remaining strong while for them remaining at the strong. same time yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It, it, that's hard to do you know what i'm saying because it's it's a mind fuck a little bit it's like i should be open to 
like letting my emotions come in, but then I'm supposed to be strong and not let my emotions like super affect others type shit. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that's it's almost an impossible task, fam. There. Thank to you. Do both of them well. Thank you. It's like a Chinese riddle. And yeah. that's what I've realized. It's like a Chinese riddle. Like, all right, if you're, if you're, you, the goal of to have a life partner, right, is mm-hmm. to be there for someone. So if I'm having a bad day, you're having a bad day, we can discuss it and work through it as a team. That's the goal, right? But ultimately, what I realized is as many times as I cried in front of my ex, that probably dried up the pussy each time in micro mm-hmm. doses. And I didn't even realize it. You know right. what I mean? Because right. it, it's like if you have a bodyguard, right? And your bodyguard's supposed to be the dude guarding you. And that motherfucker's always getting slapped. You know what I'm saying? You're like, <laughs> what the fuck's going on? <laughs> so if you're supposed to be the guy who they're leaning on, they're stoic person, it's like, all right, if you're a man, you can, I'm telling you men right now, if you have financial troubles, never tell your girl until after you solve the financial troubles. Because the right. moment you tell them why you're in the financial troubles, they ain't going to go, oh, we're sorry to hear that about you. They're going to go, what are we going to do now? What am I supposed to do? It's just start right. switching all of a sudden. And you're like, and also, oh, there's oh, oh. a little bit of resentment for you bringing that stress into her world. Like, you Bingo. To have this shit covered. Yes. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck is you doing? Like, I'm depending on you to like have this shit figured out or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Also, I was thinking like when you were saying, what were you saying about like financial shit? You can't talk about it, solve it, and then you could bring it up later. Like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know, but shit like, was crazy right in March. But yeah, we we already solved that. You know what I mean? What were you saying right before that though? Oh shit, well, I'm a stoner, bro. All right. Yeah, so right. I was saying what I was saying yeah. before that is essentially you cannot, you you basically, bro, you, it's impossible. It's an impossible feat remaining stoic and 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 being the person. It's the body, the bodyguard analogy. I was giving right, the right, whole right. bodyguard right, right, thing. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you're yeah. the one they're going to for security, essentially, but you want to be able to go to them and lean on them. That's what it was. Like. Your woman wants to see you cry once just to know that you're capable of it. She don't want to see that shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? She wants to know that you have depth and you're not just a fucking piece of shit with no feelings. But at the same time, it it better be a good reason that you're crying in front of her. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? If you're not going to lose points in my mind, subconsciously or not, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, it just is. It's not a good look. I mean, as far as, if you're to be looked at as the strong one, you know what I'm saying? I, I saw somewhere on, on someone else's podcast, maybe Fresh and Fit, I believe. Fresh and Fit. I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. H word. He always, they always come to an H word. Fresh. Fresh. Start time to shine, baby. Bastard. All right. So someone wrote in the comments that, they were a, an assistant church, uh, like a church counselor, you know, uh-huh. a second level church counselor. And he and the person was like, yo, my eyes were wide, opened up wide when uh, when a woman said that her husband cried in front of her after his mom died. And she was like, yeah, I can't be with this guy no more. <laughs> That's it's fucked like, up, man. Mom died. So then that I'm means- saying, like at a funeral, you can't let a motherfucker like have a tear too, because I definitely cried when my grandmother passed and I hadn't cried in a while you know what i'm saying but i definitely remember like it being a moment you know what i'm saying like oh wow he's you know he's crying and everybody was trying to like oh snap like i'm i'm shocked to see you know all these you know tears or whatever coming from a guy that seems like very you know even killed or or mellow or whatever it is you know what i'm saying but it was a sad day man you know this is, it, grandparents are very sweet you know like 100%. If you're lucky enough to have sweet grandparents and mine were very sweet people. So when she passed, she was an angel. You know what I mean? She walked to her job to and fro, you know what I'm saying? For years and years and years and years. Like, God rest her soul. Strong people were. So it's just, you know, it's just, it's just, I just noticed it's interesting. It's like, you gotta like, I don't know when you can be vulnerable in front of your lady. I don't even know if you fully can be vulnerable in, in front of your lady. And that's a question maybe we'll get to in years to come. But I mean, it's, it's a conundrum, I bro. Think that's another thing about here comes the communication once again, back into the relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, when you cried 
or like if you look at a man as weak for crying, maybe talk to him about what he was feeling in that moment. You know what I'm saying? Or try to like walk, you know, a couple blocks in his shoes type shit to where you usually don't cry about a whole lot of shit. Like a lot of people have a lot of friends getting, you know, taken off this planet early, especially these days. Uh, you know, relatives getting, you know, like siblings or, you know, any, any anything, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, if if a man is crying at something, that doesn't make him, you know, weak necessarily. You know what I'm saying? But nope. at the same time, in a relationship, when you're being looked at as the protector or the breadwinner or whatever, it might be, you know, a bit of a, a thing that starts to build up, you know what I mean? A, a little bit of like, oh, snap, like, I'm not feeling that type shit with the other party, you know, like, and that's real. And that's when they need to, like, talk about it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, when I saw you cry, I thought that shit was some weak shit. And I'm going to turn around and be like, fuck you. You know what yeah, I'm saying? No, like, you're right. I, you're I'm, right. I'm entitled to my emotions or whatever. Yep. And that, that shit might be a squash conversation. You might re-earn the respect and be like, yeah. Standing you on your, your principles might make you hot again yes. type shit. You know what I'm saying? Boundaries so are sexy. Let that oh. communication flow. A hundred, a hundred percent. I'm going to, I mean, I listen, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it a full stack. I'm not even, I'm going to not even hold you. Yes. I do not advocate you crying in front of, in front of your, your lady, so to speak, but you can't just keep this shit bottled in forever. Well, that's when you have lash out moments. Like we just witnessed at the Oscars. That was a lash out moment. You know what I'm saying? Like anybody like properly processing things, frustrations, this, that, and the other, don't have like knee jerk reactions like that. That was such a knee jerk reaction. So it's not healthy. And honestly, it, another thought just came to me that the only people who have true, not even sympathy. The only people who have true empathy, because of course we have sympathy, but only people who have true empathy and sympathy mm -hmm. for when a man's crying, and not a man who just cries about everything, like some you know, emotional little sissy, you know, boy, dude. I'm talking about a man, man. And he's, mm -hmm. when I see a man, man crying, only men feel that pain. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? When you see a man who's strong and he's crying over something, like maybe his woman left, his child passed, his mom passed, his mm -hmm. good friend died or some shit like that. We mm -hmm. feel that because we know we got to keep it strong. So when that shit breaks, you know it, it took something strong. It took something hard to break. I was about to that say it's, it's usually a cup runneth over moment. Yes, basically. like you just can't take no more in in your cup of being the solid guy. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I gotta let some of this water out, basically. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, speaking of water, because the next topic needs water. Uh, mm -hmm. The mayor's fucking bugging. Yes, he is running New York City, bitch. But this guy, this soft N words wilding. So Mayor yeah. Adams, yeah. apparently, according to WPIX Channel 11, Mayor Adams wants to grow cannabis on New York City Housing Authority rooftops. So <laughs> Mayor <laughs> Adams proposed growing <laughs> cannabis on top of housing authority properties, the projects, y'all. He wants to grow weed on top of the projects. He's quoted as saying, I believe there's a great opportunity for cannabis to be grown on NYCHA rooftops with an employment aspect of it and using the medical cannabis aspect of it, but there's many layers to getting it done. It, does this Negro thinking, bro? They're going to be robbing the weed houses on the projects, bro. Yeah, he's not thinking about the crime element of it all. He's just thinking about like square footage and dreams of trying to help the community. You know Someone put that in his ear. He just freestyled that shit out back out. He just regurgitated it out. I mean, what they really yeah. supposed to be focusing on is growing nutritious food. Yes. You know what I'm saying? A garden. Like, <laughs> not something that is like going to spark a criminal element, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like grow. <laughs> fruits and vegetables, you know what I'm saying? To subsidize, you know, the high cost of good eating in supermarkets. Like that's what you should be using that square footage for, for sure. Yo, your boy really wants to grow weed on top of the He's projects. Hooked. He's so only, a, only a soft end word would suggest that dumb shit, bro. I'm sorry, <laughs> man. Mayor being this hood, yo. Like he's <laughs> super hood, which is I, cool, I guess, but like... <laughs> My he's God, what, he's what everyone he's what Republicans thought Obama was going to be when Obama came to the White House. <laughs> right. They're just like, we can control the shit out of this dude because he's, oh, no, he's like, going to be super hood. Like, yo, right. Let's go weed in top of the projects. You know, I'm going to go to concerts and party with ASAP Rocky. What? Yeah, he's wild. He he reminds me of a. 
Was it Kwame? Who's the, who's the Detroit mayor? Oh yeah, Kwame Brown. He went to jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. He I went don't to want jail. That to happen to Eric for years. I think he's, he's got in that jail. Kwame Brown energy. Yeah, big Kwame Brown energy. Shout out to Mary Adams and Kwame Brown. All right, <laughs> Keenan. Last week you asked for it, and today we we you shall receive. Come today on. we have a director's terror dome. Yes. But welcome to the terror dome. In one corner we have a former champion, Christopher okay. Motherfucking Nolan. Oof, the Titan. In the next corner. We have a formidable foe mm. by the name of Michael Bay. Oh, shit. Two men and two directors enter. Only one oh, director leaves. Shit. Let's see who wins in this director terror dome of content. Let me tee this all up for us. Oh, who makes better movies? I don't know, bro. Who's a listen? They got, I don't, we're about to find out right now, bro. We're about to find out right now. This is how this game works. We look at the filmography and then we judge. That's usually how it works, right? Yep. We, we we let the content speak for itself and then we make our own assessment on some G shit because we're G's. You know what I'm saying? And we'll yep. be like, yeah, this isn't it. This isn't it, but this is hitting. All right. So let's get to it. All right. Christopher Nolan in one corner. His first movie that you never heard of was the following, but that's cool. First more memorable movie, Moment- Memento. I remember Memento. Yes, uh, yeah. Memento was and Memento's a classic, to be quite honest. If you yeah. rewatch it, you're going to be like, wow, this is really great. Guy Pierce was great. Joe Pantaleone was great. Carrie uh, Moss was great. Um, it was just a great film. It was a great first movie for Hollywood. Standards. I always got Memento. For some reason, I used to get Memento and Stigmata confused. Yes, because it came out the same period, movies. funny yeah. name. No, Memento is the truth. It's, it's a classic. It's a certified. It's, it, I think it's, I think they didn't, uh, who remember who uh, criteria it's a criterion collection of film i wouldn't criterion collection meant something you know what yeah. i mean yeah, um m- moving on his next movie was insomnia that was a win insomnia robin williams al pacino and uh and the chick uh, hillary swank yeah that, that was, was a, a dud that was a dud because it was a brand new production company on that one and i yeah. remember those dudes were starting that company and they ended up growing it into an awesome company but that first one was like a, a swing in a Semi miss. Yep. Yeah. It's the most. It's one of his most forgettable films, to be honest. The most forgettable behind mm-hmm. uh, the following. But then his next movie, he re, he he single handedly changed the whole genre with Batman Begins. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. He was like, "Listen, I like colors and fake backdrops, like the next man. But what if we got rid of all that shit? Yep. <laughs> it made it practical and, and did some real practical shit." Yep, Top I made it gritty and real and updated. Top to bottom. <sighs> Even Gangster. though Batman Begins isn't a perfect movie, it's it, what it means is so important. It's like the Rosa Parks of superhero movies in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is a perfect screen door. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. It's the first door you open into yes. like a house of dope shit, basically. Yes. It the vestibule so of fucking of of, of 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 superhero films and blockbusters to come. They welcome yeah. to the vestibule. This the is the prestige. Door. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. know what I mean. The door was <laughs> the door was Jaws. Then you mm-hmm. open it and it's like Batman Begins. Enjoy. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. After that, he crushed it and took it to the next level. And I mean, it, he crushed it to me. A lot of people do not know this movie. I'm surprised. I push and advocate for it. But his following movie was The Prestige. And it really is just a phenomenal movie. Interesting. You need to see it. You need to see I it. I need to see it because I didn't see it because it was two movies of similar kind of things. Yes, The Illusionist like, and The Prestige came out at the same exactly, time. Exactly, exactly. Yes, it was I that whole confused. Dante speaking in Inferno one. shit. You know yeah, what I mean? I got confused and didn't see either one. <laughs> yes, you need to see. No, you need to see the prestige. It. I want to say honestly, it's his top three movie of all time, and that wow. goes a long way. Is that it's Christian Bale? Christian Bale, Hugh Jackman, Johnson, yeah. Scarlett Johansson, and uh, the girl who thinks she's black, white. Oh, Rebecca Hall. No disrespect to her. Mm-hmm. Yes, and Rebecca Hall. It's great. Rebecca David Hall. Bowie played. Yeah, Rebecca Hall plays one of the love interests. David Bowie plays Tesla. Andy Serkis plays David Bowie's assistant. It's just stellar from top to bottom. It's That's classic cool. Nolan playing with timelines. It's just so brilliant. I mean, mm. I, 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 I want to watch it tonight, but I got to watch it with someone else because they haven't seen it. And right. it's just brilliant. Like, it's mm. just the prestige. Yes, All the right. prestige. Please see that. After that, he dropped the dark motherfucking night. Forget about it. 
that might the, it might be the greatest Batman movie there is, besides this Robert Pattinson one. I really enjoy. I mean, yeah, that one Batman. and the Michelle Pfeiffer and Penguin and Christopher Walken one, Michael Keaton and them back in the day. Those are like the three great ones. Yeah, my and Robert Pattinson's like fourth or fifth best Batman for me. You know, I still got Batman Begins, Dark Knight, uh, Batman One with uh, Tim Curry, Tim Burton, uh, Batman Two with Penguin, and then I mean Batman's One and Two, yeah, well, okay, that's and fair. then Batman Begins Number the Dark four. Knight, yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, fifth, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> he, he should be happy. He's beat George he Clooney. Be he's only he's only fifth because he's in line. Basically. Yes, that's he, all. and he beat out Dark Knight Rises in a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, 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 and that you know, Bane was the fucking like Tom Hardy couldn't have been having a bigger time. You know what I'm there saying? You At go. that time, like we was yep. ranting and raving about Tom Hardy. Come on, you already know, you already know how we get down. Hard would do big Hardy team Hardy fans, but he killed it so hard. Zoe killed it so hard. Yeah, she, she did a good killed job. it so hard. And then Colin Farrell with the fucking penguin. Yo. Oh no, he he owned that movie. He yeah. was the the true star yeah. of that movie, the penguin. Yeah. He he owned that film. But let's bring yeah. it back to Dark Knight. That right. movie is single handedly, and we'll get into this at another point. You'll see a little Easter egg. Boop. But Dark Knight is the greatest superhero movie of all time, in my opinion. I agree. I mean, it's layered. Performances are incredible, and. I don't know. It's just top to bottom classic. Shout out to Heath, man. Rest yes. in peace. Buddy. Rest in peace. That's it. Yep. Shout out to Hans Zimmer and everyone. Yep. Moving on, he did Inception after that, which was underrated, but still fucking good. Deep. Yep. I mean, it was it was too deep for most people to understand. Like, I still don't understand it. It was like, yeah. <laughs> it was just a bunch of dreams, basically, within dreams. And what are you supposed to do? If you know you're dreaming, you can manipulate it. All right, cool. I'm glad we spent two and a half hours on that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just his way of doing in Matrix meets James Bond. That's all he wanted to do. That's been like yeah. the Matrix has always been one of his fat, his the thing, the things that that movie changed his brain. Because if you look at his work in Inception, Interstellar, Tenant, especially Tenant and Inception, there's a lot of Matrix type theme work in that. So mm-hmm. um, that was just him doing bond in, in the matrix um yeah. even though i hope he does the bond the next bond if they let christopher nolan do the next bond i will i'll take a black bond chick i'll take oh, it yeah. happily okay um his next movie after inception was dark knight rises tom hardy murdered it obviously i got bones to pick with that movie but we'll let it live it was a great mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. after that interstellar super slept on it was actually a good movie super slept on super i mean i think it was slept on because of the ending like once you go through a black hole and it's unexplained and it's just somebody's interpretation, then it's just like, all right, whatever type shit. Because up until that point, it was kind of somewhat based on facts, you know what I mean? And mathematics and blah, blah, blah. And so then the other planet with the water planet. That shit was crazy. Crazy. And then Matt Damon cameo. They didn't tell you who was going to be Incredible. in it. Incredible. Incredible. Like well, in an era where you could not keep secrets, they kept the yes. secret that Matt Damon pops up two thirds of the movie. Spoiler yes. alert. Spoiler alert. Like <laughs> yeah. it was a fucking really good McConaughey solid man. Yeah, bro. That was when he, that was when he was on that winning streak. Dallas Buyers yeah. Club, Interstellar. Yeah. yeah, he was doing. He was just he couldn't miss. True Detective. He was just hitting in that period. Because so 2014, he was owning. He made it real to himself, basically. Whatever it is, he committed to that. You know what I'm saying? And that that for what it's worth, it, it comes across. That run was really solid. Is. I don't. I don't think anyone's done a TV and movie run in like that same period as Silas, not McConaughey. No, I mean, it's only been recent that you could even do some shit. Exactly. Like that. He set the bar so high with True Detective into <laughs> Dallas Buyers Club, like doing both. He was of so them. good in True Detective that his performance was beyond the idea of the show, I think. You know, yeah, no one cared thing. about the show. We didn't even care yeah, about we the didn't ending. know what the show was about. We you don't even saying? care, just bro. Watching McConaughey just be this fucking crazy detective dude. I'm like, with Woody Harrelson like? and just him, Woody, Woody playing the straight man. You know yeah, what I mean? Man. Woody's the straight man. And this dude just running words basically just yeah. throwing dialogue out there wax and poetic blah blah, blah 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 yeah what am i gonna do with it put the cigarette out in this beer can crush the beer can like what to do you know with pages of words and a chair yep murdered it murdered, murdered it. it moving on dunkirk that was a solid movie for christopher nolan uh yeah. was, didn't really get a lot of love because people don't care about period movies we don't really care about that stuff but it was cool I mean, it was well executed those wars are 100 years old you yeah. know what i'm saying like it's, it's tough to boring. get excited about something like that. You know, it's like trying to put glory out right now. 
Yeah, and the peak of it is is uh, Saving Private Ryan. Like, that's the ultimate, you know, mm-hmm. like, how are you going to beat Saving Private Ryan's opening 20 minutes? Like, never. You, you know what never. I mean? So why are we even re- going through this, guys? I mean, it's the, the biggest massacre in the history of the world. You know what I'm saying? The beach of Normandy besides, like, Vietnam, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you know, Hiroshima and whatnot. But, like, that day, storming the beach of Nor- D-Day? No, and he, he and, actually and was, filmed that shit, yep. Spielberg style. Oh. Who doesn't miss? Yeah, it's hard for Dunkirk. He shoots like, it all. Yep. Yeah, it on. was hard. It was hard. This next movie that he did is it will go down as his most slept on good movie because of COVID. Tenant, Tenant was just fucking good, bro. I mean, I finally like sat down and watched the first twenty minutes or whatever type shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't even need to watch the rest. This is one of the greatest <laughs> movies. It's one of the greatest shot movies and coordinated movies I've ever seen. It's so brilliant. You're like, what am I and watching? The turns right now? that they're taking, I'm like, if this goes on for another two hours, that's incredible. <sighs> incredible. So I was just like, yeah, it was one of the greatest movies ever. It, uh, uh, hands watching. down. H- hands down. Hands down. Hands yeah. down. All right. So let's go. Uh, we're going to go into Michael Bay. Uh, He had an illustrious career as a music video director. Mm -hmm. He was very much in the vein of a commercial Tony Scott. We'll get into the dissection of that later. Mm -hmm. His first film I'm seeing him is Bad Boys. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think Michael Bay is going to win this because the movies he does, they're all very like big winner movies that he chose to do. It's not like super artsy, the most creative, the most thought provoking or anything like that they're just big label big brand big action so all his movies are going to be like bangers probably he got some duds though well well, let's get through let's see so bad boys one we know that's a classic martin will classic after that the rock that shit was dope as fuck sean connery nick cage bro when you thought Ed Harris, nick cage wasn't a fucking movie this was when nick cage wasn't an action movie star you know, that's how crazy that is. That yep. was the movie that turned him into a type shit. Great yeah. movie. Classic. And when they were destroying San Shot Francisco, the shit that was out just of like, San Francisco. Yeah. Come on. They, you know, she, she tried it, tried it, but the, the rock did it, did it. Did it, did it, did it. Ed After Harris, that, he Hulk did a big King. movie, but it was not a good one. Tony Todd. Oh, oh Todd Cohen. Yeah. Awesome. Come on. This next movie, though, I don't know about this one. Armageddon player. It was big, but it was. Oh. Only because Deep Impact was better. See, it was that era where there were two movies for everything. The yep. Illusionist, the Prestige, yep. the and Volcano, Dante's Peak. Armageddon was just too Americana, cookie cutter, corny. You know what I mean? They just went with like, all right, let's lean into the country planes and the jeans and the convertibles and clothes on the wash line. And Aaron Smith soundtrack. I'm not going to lose shit. your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> all that super Wisconsin feel. Like, yeah. this shit is corny. 100%. And the rumors, well, maybe we should just leave that out. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that, you gotta, you, hey, big cake, Keenan, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thumbs up. I'm above board, man. We don't do hearsay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Uh, moving on. Next movie was a dud, too, but it was Big Dud, Pearl Harbor. Yeah, that shit dudded like a motherfucker. Mm, you know, and it went semi hard. Like once the attack started, that shit was well shot. It was intense as fuck. Yep. But I think it was too much of, I think it was too, too much of the style of like highly lit, sweaty, dirty faces type thing, you know, that he became like known for, like it worked again, you know, once Transformers came back around type shit. Yeah. (laughs) It had grown into a, a thing. And I don't think anybody wanted to see Pearl Harbor as part of a, you know, a person's style, basically. It was supposed to, should have been about the story or whatever type shit. Yeah, no, that was a miss. And yeah, then he came with Bad Boys 2, which was a hit. Come on. Bad Boys 2 was a hit. Came Super. back with that. But then he came back with, like, it was a decent movie, but it was kind of a miss. Like, Michael Bay does, like, solid movies, but they be missing sometimes. The Island. Mm-hmm. Horrible. Ha- See? Miss. You miss. and McGregor is called Jordan Yeah, Hansen? miss. Awful. Miss. It, Big miss. miss. Big miss. I action. hear what they were trying to do, but it, Horrible. it didn't make any sense. It was Thank like, you. yo, what the fuck? I'm sorry. Clones that can't escape, and then yeah, the who escape. Rinsed this? Why y'all dragging me down this fucking? Yeah, <laughs> give me my popcorn money back. Straight up. Oh, yeah. 
But then he so came man, out the bench. I might have been wrong. You know what I'm saying? I was no, you were going. No, that shit was trash. Yeah, trash. No, I'm just saying, like Michael Bay overall. Oh no, yeah, 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 yeah. He's hit or miss, but yeah, he got hit some big hits coming. Next right. one, Transformers one. Just like that. Yeah, bro. Come on, Anthony Anderson doing the dance dance on the thing. Mama, introducing, mama. Introducing Megan Fox. Yeah. Shia La, Shia making Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. That was his yeah, first Shia movie LaBeouf star. Yeah. Making him a big action star, bringing him the the money, the big money. Yep, because he'd been around forever, but this was the big money. Yep, Transformers one. After that, Transformers two. Shout out yeah, to Tyrese, Anthony get that money. <laughs> Anthony murdered that. He he goes, murdered they, that. They, 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 they go, they saw the scratches on the thing, and they go, he goes, what, what was that? Freddy Krueger? He goes, no, this, this. He goes, no, there's only three of them. That was Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I love him in that one. Transformers two, Revenge of the Fallen. Shout out to Tyrese, kept them in there. Yeah. Uh, then he did Transformers three, right back to back. He went, he's like, I know where my money, my bread's getting buttered. <laughs> yeah, once he went to Transformers world, I feel like he kind of got got sucked into that bubble for like 10 years yeah 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 transformers 3 was like it was going down yeah. transformers 2 hit it was like it's like okay we're and then transformers 3 is like Ooh. they ran out of story big time how many times how many new auto da, 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 what do they call it Decepticons? can yeah. you bring out of gestation to fight to be evil and optimus prime stay winning all against all these soft networks how how old ass optimus prime Come on, ass, bro. Getting his ass beat and then like wins it at the end. That yeah, and he, he's a Muhammad Ali of fucking Transformers. That shit only worked time. in the 80s and in wrestling. Yes, in Rocky Past movies. Yeah. Rocky movies. Slow <laughs> movies. That works. Yes. Yes. That's it. All then right. they came with an underrated movie, Pain and Game. Now, Pain and Game was. That was good. It was good and it was crazy. Yes. I, my brother wow. and I were talking about the Tony Shalhoub of it all. Like oh, he's brilliant, but did he like fit in the movie? Like, because he was distracting for me. He was quirky. Wonder, he was quirky as fuck. Yeah, I wonder if it should have been like a more subtle kind of a like character that was just an older man as opposed to like. I appreciated the comic relief, but I don't know if it needed that because the movie's so crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's so like hyper, like action packed. It's almost as if like uh, the one with Jason Statement, Jason Statham, where he, you know he only has like 24 hours or something before start. Crank. It's like if Crank had a bunch of jokes in it. Like it was it already does. like joking. You don't need a joke. Yeah. Man. You don't need a joke, man. Yeah. You know nah, you're mean? right about that because it was already comedic in tone and elements. Yeah. I got this pumping. You know what I mean? It was already like stupid. And then nah. Tony Shalhoub, I'm like, all right, well, this is now, now this is starting to look fake to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, I'm on SNL. Shalhoub I be knowing fake shit. I do sketches. <laughs> I know fake shit because I do fake shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> moving on Michael Bay he good. did Transformers Age of Extinction that was a trash one uh keep it moving That's then the he did Transformers yeah fourth Transformers he did five he did five uh <laughs> moving on 13 hours no one saw that one uh Transformers the last night no one saw that one uh six underground that was garbage that was on Netflix and now he has ambulance I still haven't seen that one but you know I fuck with Yaya and team so I might go up so to see that did bad boys forever not him. He hired uh, in these uh, Indian or Middle Eastern guys that were like his protégés, and he executive produced it. That's why it sucked. Yeah, bingo, bingo. B basically, yeah, basically. So this is what we have to talk about. Michael Bay, Christopher Nolan, right? Michael Bay got a lot of cultural hits, but all right, this is my argument. Nolan. Thank I'm you. Yeah, because he didn't Nolan. miss as many times as Michael Bay did. Michael Bay missed a gang of times. Anytime he stepped outside of the obvious, he missed. Missed complete, complete Nolan. No, he made artistic movies, you know. What yes, I'm and like some are slept on, some are not, but they weren't like misses. Like, Memento is not a miss. No, only miss he has is the one is the, it's the second movie, the insomnia. It's the only right. miss he has. Like, right. the rest of them are just movies y'all ain't see, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. But those shits aren't trash, you right. just ain't see them. Like, I take right. for every single one of them, like, yo, bro, trust me, this is a good ass movie. Like, right. you need to see this shit. Like, Transformers the last night. What? <laughs> what? What is this? A, you did the British Transformers? What the fuck? And he switched <laughs> it up. Like, is, is Wahlberg now? Yeah. I'm not and, feeling that. and he got guns and he has the gun. What he, the fuck? Wahlberg always has to have a shotgun. Yeah, bro. No, he had an Autobot gun. They gave him a Transformer gun. No way. 
It was so stupid, now. bro. I was like, how did this salt <laughs> N-word get a transformer gun, bro? Um, <laughs> he wrote, he's like, you know, I need a transformer gun. He did the Samuel L. Jackson. I need a purple lightsaber. George was like, we don't have purple. We have red and green. He goes, I need a purple lightsaber. I need a purple Fine, lightsaber. Sam. I do. Fine, Fine bro. Fine, Sam. You got purple. Yeah, whatever it takes. All right, we have a brief sponsor real quick, uh, Keenan. Let's give a shout out to our brief sponsor. Come on. All right, let's go. I can't begin my day until I've had a dick and cider. There's nothing better than waking up to a good old dick and cider. My girlfriend <laughs> loves dick and ciders. My sister came to stay with us for a month and my husband can not go a day without a dick and cider. My sister loves to wake up in the morning with a dick and cider. So there you have it, for over 150 years, Frederick von Dickens has developed a beverage that literally brings women to their knees. So okay. fellas, for the sake of the economy, get a dick and cider. Right, Come on, how many times? Know. How many times can you tell the same joke in one commercial? <laughs> <laughs> well, we get it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, kudos to you me. gentlemen kudos yeah. to you so keenan you asking you shall get and i gave it to you once again next terror dome but welcome to the terror dome another one come on bro and it's a first it's a first oh, of its kind what I a fucking treat a first of its kind in one corner i have the marvel cinematic universe the other corner i have the DC extended universe. It sounds like it might be a slaughter like last time, but let's get into it. Get into it. Because as soon as you start sleeping on DC, you remember that DC has Batman. You're like, oh shit. That's not necessarily exactly. just nothing. Exactly. So I don't even need to get into it. We can freestyle this one off the top of the head. Ready? So Marvel has TV film from Iron Man to uh black panther to captain Spider america Man. thor spider-man guardians of the galaxy uh, uh you name it but they also got some big misses eternals a uh, bunch of tv show jessica jones was a dud iron fist was a dud luke cage was a dud luke cage was a dud like a motherfucker they they have misses but for most for 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 all intents and purposes they they pretty much hit way more than they miss they hit their movies, the TV shows. The only one I saw was like Winter Soldier and the Falcon. That have been like dope. Loki and, was and amazing. Loki, Loki. And Loki was amazing. Yeah. Yes. I didn't see Hawkeye yet. I couldn't get through it. Um, Daredevil was really good. Uh, I'll give that that. Daredevil was really good. Um, Back in the day, you mean? Yes. The original Daredevil TV show. Terry TV yeah, show yeah, Daredevil yeah. was good. Yeah, from fucking, whatchamacallit? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. TV show. They did Daredevil as a TV show on Netflix. And they put him in the new Spider-Man. So the new Spider-Man. What was the show she was on? She wasn't on a show, Jennifer Garner show, Electra. Oh, Electra. Yeah, that shit was trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit was trash. No, 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 no. Daredevil <laughs> starring the dude who is in the who does a cameo on the new Spider-Man. He's right. the man. He murders gotcha. it. And gotcha. and Punisher was whack, but Punisher in Spy in Daredevil was good. Um gotcha. Marvel is the fucking goat, bro. You know what I mean? They don't miss, they make all the money. Mm -hmm. DC's the first to ever really do it though, because they got the Batman's, Superman's from Christopher Reeves to the other boy who looked just like him, all the way down to the new dude. Uh, what's his name? Uh, with the square jaw who fucked up with the mustache. I keep fighting. Thomas. Tom something. Tom something. Damn, bro. Come on. I can't believe I'm watching. Uh, Superman. What's this dude's name? Man of Steel. God damn. I know his Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Mean, it ain't Tom. Yeah, Tom. Where the fuck I'm getting Tom, Tom from? Tom. I'm like, Tom. Tom. Uncle Tom? Tom. Oh, Henry Cavill. <laughs> Tom Jenkins. <laughs> Tom Jenkins. The black Superman. Shazam. You know Shazam should have been a black Superman. They fucked right. up with that. Shout out to Zachary and Levi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shazam. Yeah, but he just turns to a black guy. Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> white team, but he turns into a black All guy. All right. He should have at least had that moment like one time. Yeah, <laughs> one time. One time. <laughs> Where he Shazams it to you. And then he goes, oh, what's the same direction? It goes back to Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> Cameo, bitch. Um, DC started it all, but they it's they don't really have a strategy. Like they just recently got merged with Discovery. They're trying to create a whole DC thing. Like they don't have a strategy. It's incohesive. You know what I mean? We've seen eight different Jokers, two different Jokers at the same time with Jared Leto and Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. You know, Suicide Squad. What are we doing here? Harley Quinn. What's going on? It's all a mess, right? Yeah. A little bit. 
But I'm going to make, I'm going to present one argument to you. And as I said, I Easter egged it from before, and I'm going to bring you full circle. It's what we call in the industry a callback. I'm willing to go on the line and say, the Dark Knight single-handedly defeats any MCU movie in single combat. We put it up in single combat, and you can take the whole roster, line them up one by one, and let them fight the Dark Knight in single combat, and the Dark Knight wins against everyone, including Civil War, Winter Soldier, Endgame, every single one of them, single combat, Dark Knight wins. I mean, I would... I can't really argue with that because like Marvel movies have dope moments, you know what I'm saying? But it's rare that the entire movie is like, as I can't even say it, it's, it's rare. It's it's more often than not, but not as dope as like start to finish as the Dark Knight was. That they have the best universe and they know how to give us the best Easter eggs, like the new Doctor Strange. I can't wait to see because they said oh, it has the kill. most it has the most features than any other movie of all of them combined. Like there's a zillion people in the new Doctor Strange. Yeah, that shit is cute. You know, what I mean, it, it's just cute once it becomes like a known thing that they do. You know what I'm saying? Like Marvel starting to just crisscross its actors, basically, which is like, all right, cool. But dopeness factor. Christopher Nolan is one of the dopest directors ever, you know what I'm saying? And like. Heath Ledger was one of the greatest actors ever. Mo Freeman in there. Yep. Mo freaking uh, Michael Aaron Kane, Eckhart. Michael Caine in there. Like, Michael Caine. It's like, yo. Tom, Hall. you can just run the name. like, And that's what brought me back. Like, I love Marvel movies more than most people. I'm going to tell you this straight up and down. Yeah. If All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to put this out there like this. This is my stance on it. MCU is the best universe. Mm-hmm. But if we had to put one movie against, if we had to go property for property or one property go single combat and then the winner of that stays in, you bring your next contestant up to fight the champion, DC wins just by putting the Dark Knight up. I mean, it's just the realest one, you know, like even with Civil War and Endgame, it's like heightened powers. You know what I'm saying? There's something so much more like grounding when it's real. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Joker was just a real psychopath. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, I'm going to make this pencil disappear oh, type shit. Ta-da, magic. You know? It was just such a great when movie. When he slid down the money, that shit was classic. And then he burnt it all up. When he exploded the fucking hospital all in one take. That was all, all one take. take. He got in the thing. Like, yep. that's what I'm saying. Like, when you... It, you do one amazing mind bending thing and that thing can fight against a lot of other shit out here. You know what I yeah. mean? And that yeah. dark Knight, as I said, the MCU is my favorite universe, but dark Knight defeats everything in the MCU single hand combat. Well, I mean, I just like, I give the MCU its credit. Like I give Pixar its credit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they make quality shit when they do an action sequence. It stepped up from the last one, you know what I'm yes. saying? And they've done a lot of them. So, like, their action sequences nowadays are fucking very entertaining. They get better and better. When Sam Jackson is getting, like, bombarded in that car and they're trying oh. to, like, battery ram him. Out yeah, of they're scene. hitting him with the gunshot. Do, 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 do. Bro, that fucking scene is no joke. It's so tense. It's, it's so no tense. Joke. I'm like, so what tense. is happening? Why? Why? Who's after him like that? Yes. What's going on right <laughs> now? And he's so yeah. calm. They're like, the uh, action defense. He goes, wait, wait. He's just right. holding the line. Right. Oh, no, that was yeah. that. It, it was great. But once again, it's not the dark night. No, it's not. So we got two last topics. And we're out of here. Well, one last topic, pretty much. So apparently Netflix, uh, pl- their stock has plunged 35 percent over the next two, last two days. On news that they lost 200,000 subscribers. Yeah, from password sharing, from what I'm hearing. No, they're saying macro issues, war in Russia, that kind of stuff. They added 2.5 million subscribers, but lost 200,000 subscribers. So I don't know if that means they lost 2.7 million or they just Mm -hmm. lost 200,000. All I hear is the headline of 200,000 lost subscribers and like Mm -hmm. the stock goes down 35%. Bill Ackman was like made a big $1.1 billion investment into it in January, took all his money out and took a $400 million plus loss, like on some, like just took the wash. Like people are scrambling. And what does that mean when they do that? You know what I mean? Like he has a plan obviously for like, 
getting that money back, I'm sure. No, 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 no. He's going to write that off. Bill Ackman overperforms, like especially 2019, 2020. He, mm-hmm. he, did, he outperformed everyone on Wall Street and everyone right. in every private equity. So he's kind of a legend in that regard. So even him taking this $400 million loss is like 1% of like what he's dealing with. Because he's dealing with like forty billion, so he's like four hundred million dollars loss. It's gonna we're gonna write it off, and we'll make our money in the next two quarters. Don't worry, we're good. You know what I mean? But I need to get rid of this before it keeps sinking. You know what I'm saying? But that also causes it to keep sinking, right? You know what I'm saying? You just don't. You just fire sale the shares. So Netflix's big thing is like, yeah, we're we're dealing with headwinds. We have two hundred million subscribers, over hundred million shared households, which means that's hundred million homes we should be getting additionally. Plus, we have major competitors, and I think we're going to need ad money. Now they're talking about exploring doing ad integrations. Wow. As I said, they hired a head of podcasting and they're only doing internal strategy. Their internal strategy is doing podcasts that are like a company, the shows they have. But I promise you, as I predicted and we predicted this when two years ago, Netflix will be a full podcasting audio and video platform in the next 24 months from now because they need that revenue. They need more sponsors. They need the next Joe Rogan experience. Mm-hmm. They need the next you already know. They right. need it Hello. to keep getting subscribers. Yep. Right. Hello. Yeah. I mean, they need to keep coming up with different strategies to make it appealing. Yep. Big time. Big time. And, you know, uh, we'll leave on this final one. You know, um, I don't know if you were following this Johnny Depp case, but Amber Heard, but Yo, she pooped on nasty. his bed. They both are just looking. They both are looking very petty and disgusting. Yo, these people look she like said some wild, <laughs> She said, said some wild shit and apparently done some wild shit. And he said some crazy shit in his text messages. Like, I'm going to fuck a burnt corpse and some extra shit. I'm like, thank you for ruining Johnny Depp for me forever. Like, if I thought pirates didn't do it for me already, (laughs) you know, this, you know, hearing about his text messages is awful. The question is, if she remains an Aquaman, is this like a we're punishing patriarchy thing? Because how can she get away with being so trife and still be an Aquaman? And this dude can't even get he can't get casted in anything, bro. We you know what I'm saying? He could even make it into a sketch on your already know. I mean, you know that's what it is. Like the man can't win in the <laughs> cases. If you don't call the cops and didn't do nothing, and videotaped at all, it, videotaped yeah. it all. Like <laughs> yeah, you can't, there's no winning. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta stay out of arguments, folks. That's Straight up, we learned a lesson from Mike's. Just stay out of arguments because you prod that tiger, it's gonna go tiger on you, bro. Exactly. Shout out to Chris Rock. You know what I mean? You heard that tiger went tiger. That tiger went tiger. Oh uh, well, Keenan, thank you for your time. We appreciate you. We know you late late out there. Oh, um, man, it's my pleasure, man. It's yes. all good. Two pterodomes. Two pterodomes. That was so good. Thank two. you for that. Two, two. Yeah. And it was unsuspecting on who was gonna win. It looks obvious, and then it's like, oh yeah, shit. No. DC is just sitting on that diamond. It's the whole point of the tarot dome. It's like you yeah. think it's obvious, but let's see who wins. Yeah. It's you know what I'm yes, all I need is Tina Turner to sing. We don't need another hero. We don't need another Yo, Paroli, drop that Tina Turner. Drop shit, that okay? Tina Turner drop right that. there. Drop that. Drop that right, right there. Okay. <laughs> all right. This has been you already know. He's Keenan Thompson. I'm Tony Maroli. We are a wrap on episode 104, I believe. Shit, episode 104. Man, that's major. Hope y'all yes, enjoyed sir. that Tina Turner, man. We did. I do my man. I'm karaoke <laughs> night. I'm lit. Come on, man. Have a good night, kid. You too, bro, bro. In a Thanks. minute. Yeah. Oh, I got it. This has been a Gradients production. <laughs> <laughs>